our website. If you haven't um, been to it already, I would encourage you to go play around with it, encourage your students to go play around with it. Um, there's information about forms. If your student was selected for a process called verification, there's information about that. There's always questions about scholarships. We have information about that on our, scholar, on, on our website. Um, what I find working in the financial aid office is many of the questions that we get could be answered by visiting the website. And so as we get closer to the start of the fall semester, um, if you're not familiar with just how busy um, the campus becomes, in our office, if, if you call in close to fall start, um, it may take two hours to get through on the phone to someone. If you come to the office, you may wait in a line that takes about two hours to reach a person. That's just how busy it gets during that time of year. Um, and many of those people that wait in line may have had their question easily answered by visiting our website. So I encourage you, if you have a question, go to the website first um, to see if you can get that question answered. And then if not, make that phone call, visit the campus. Your student will have what's called a MyUNLV account. If you haven't seen it already, um, if your student will allow you, ask for the passcode so you can play around in that. Um, my UNLV account because all the information for their financial aid will be housed on this account. Um, there's also important dates that your student will want to take note of. Once you get into their My UNLV account, you will see the Student Center. So the Student Center has a ton of great information. Down at the bottom, the red circle you'll see is if your student has been awarded their financial aid, there'll be a link that they can click to view and accept their financial aid. Here, this yellow box is a to-do list. So anything that we are requesting from your student um, that we need to process their financial aid will show up on their to-do list. If there are items from the financial aid office on their to-do list, that will prevent their aid from paying out. So it's important for your student to check this account um, and to take care of whatever's on the list. So this particular example, um, these three items are from the financial aid office. If you click on the details um, tab, it will tell you which office is requesting items. So admissions puts items on there, financial aid puts items. Make sure you know um, which department's requesting which information. If you click on the actual verification worksheet, there are tabs that you can, that you can actually click. It will open up and it will give you instructions on how to complete that particular task. Um, when you open up this one, it gives you a link to the worksheet, so you can copy and paste that link, print out the worksheet from there. Um, the student tax transcript and the parent tax transcript, it gives you directions on how to complete those. Either going to the IRS website or utilizing what's called the IRS data retrieval tool to embed it within the FAFSA. So it's important to not just look at the list, but actually to choose the items and see what instructions that it gives you. There's also a communication center. We will send your students notifications also when there are things that we need from them. And those will be copied to their RebelMail account and to this communication center. So it's important to check that on a regular basis. So if your student is awarded, it will look similar to this. They can accept and decline their award here. If it is a grant or a scholarship, they do not have to accept or decline. Those are automatically accepted for your students. We know that they want that money because they don't have to pay it back. Loans, however, they do have to manually accept or decline because it does need to be paid back. So when it's time to accept and decline, this is what the um, website will look like. As you can see, the grants and the scholarship, there isn't a box to click. They're already checked on the student's behalf they're automatically accepted for them. The loan, however, the student is deciding to accept. They've been offered the 4,500, um, but you see in the accepted box, they've put in 2,000. So the amount offered to you, you or your student is the maximum offer. You don't have to accept the maximum amount. If you sit down, have a family talk, and decide we don't need, you know, we don't need all of that, you can change the amount to whatever it is that you do need. Just know that whatever amount you change it to will be divided in half. You will receive half for fall and half for spring. So what this student
student is electing to do is receive $1,000 for the fall semester and $1,000 for the spring semester. Do we know um, the difference between subsidized and unsubsidized loans? Would you like me to explain that? Please. Awesome. Um, so both of these examples are subsidized loans. So let's say it's my freshman year, I get an offer of a subsidized loan for $3,000. It's the only loan that I decide to take in my college career. I'm in school the next four to five years. At the end, when I graduate, that loan will still only be $3,000. No interest will accrue on that loan. Same scenario, but now an unsubsidized loan. After that four to five years, that $3,000 is going to be significantly greater because the entire time I'm in school, it will accrue interest. If I have chosen not to make interest payments along the way, then that loan has capitalized interest, on top of interest, on top of interest. So it can be significantly greater. It's important for your student to understand the different types of loans that are offered to them um, and, and make an educated decision on which type they choose to um, receive. Both types do not require repayment until after the student graduates or if they drop below half time. So if they drop down to five credits, their grace period will start to um, expire, go through the six month grace period. If they do not go back to school within six months of dropping below the six credits, um, down to five credits, they'll go into repayment. And their loan servicer will start sending them notices saying, hey, show us some money. Um, but as long as they remain at least part-time or greater, they will not have to go into repayment until after they graduate. Here they're gonna so an award that um, is also has the potential to be offered is a Parent PLUS loan. So the subsidized and unsubsidized loans are loans that are offered to your student. So they're in the student's name. Parent PLUS loan is different because it is in your name. It is a credit-based loan. So you have to go to the studentloans.gov website and you would apply for that loan. It's all through the Department of Education. So in our office, we don't know what factors they look at to determine whether you're eligible or not. They just let us know whether or not they have decided to you know, extend the award to you or to um, not extend it to you. The amount that you'll see offered it on your student's award letter isn't a guarantee, because again, it's credit-based. It just shows the maximum amount that you are eligible to apply for. Um, you can always decrease that amount. So Parent PLUS loans can be a couple thousand dollars, up to thirty, forty thousand um, dollars So some parents see this big, huge, like, oh, I'm not taking a $25,000 loan, oh my goodness. Um, that just shows the maximum amount that you're eligible to apply for. Um, it does not mean you have to apply for that amount. You can always reduce it, you just can't increase it. Um, so if your credit is approved and your student receives that loan, that those funds will be dispersed with the rest of the student's federal aid. Um, so if they have grants, scholarships, their own loans, that Parent PLUS loan is dispersed at the same time. If the credit is denied, um, the Department of Education will give you an opportunity to try to get a co-signer or an endorser. If that is not um, an option, then we can offer your student what's called a Parent PLUS substitution loan. Um, if they're a freshman, it's an additional $4,000 in the form of an unsubsidized if they're a junior or a senior, then it is additional $5,000 in the form of an unsubsidized loan. That is only extended to them if you have applied and been denied. Um, it, we, we do not accept, so many parents will call in and say, I know my credit is bad, there's no way I'm gonna get approved. So can you just go ahead and extend the loan? The answer will be no. We do have to um, require you to go through the process and get a formal denial before we're able Um, so, if your student graduated from a Nevada high school, they may be eligible for the Millennium Scholarship. It is offered through the State Treasurer's Office. And so, um, sometime this month, the State Treasurer, if your student is eligible, will send you a packet to your home offering your student that award. It will give them instructions on how to activate the award with the State Treasurer's Office. There is nothing they need to send to us because the State Treasurer will inform us 
once your student has accepted and activated the award. Um, they'll notify us sometime closer to the start of the fall semester, and then that award will be added to your student's financial aid award letter. Um, but it, you will not see it before then. Um, some of you, if you've already been awarded on your student's uh, award letter, you, might, you may have seen Millennium Estimate. Um, if you go back and check, you will see that that estimate is now gone. We are making room for the actual award to come through, so we've removed the estimates in preparation of adding on the actual award since the award letters will be coming out this July. Um, if you don't get a packet and you know that your student should have been awarded, based on their GPA, based on the qualifications. That's not something that we will be able to fix in our office because we're not the grantors of the scholarship. You will need to call the state treasurer's office to inquire with them as to why the student did not receive a packet. They may have had the address wrong, it may have got lost in the mail, um, but just do like a Google search. They're really easy to find. Um, and talk to the state treasurer if you believe your student should receive the millennium. But August has come and they haven't received an offer letter 